Insidious, The Last Key, is the fourth film in the Insidious franchise, and it is the first weekend of January. That means we have a horror film. Oh my god, it's January. You know what that means. Possibly a hidden gem amongst a pile of trash. If the past few years have anything to say. What's going on, Hollywood? Are you actually trying? You're scaring me. So the fourth Insidious film focuses on the character of Elise, portrayed by Lin Shay once again, and this film takes place before the very first original Insidious film. It opens with a prologue where we learn about her backstory, and eventually we discover that she has had a very troubled childhood. And her childhood comes back into play when the man who now lives in her childhood home calls her as an adult and says, hey, Something's haunting this house, can you please help? So she decides to go back to this house and confront all of those memories she hoped would stay buried. I'm a fan of the Insidious franchise. I loved the first one. I thought the second one was pretty good, and the third one was fine. They've all gotten increasingly worse, but there has yet to be a Freddy's Revenge or a Halloween Resurrection or a Paranormal Activity Ghost Dimension. There is not yet an awful entry, and I'm happy to say the last key still is not an awful entry. Is it as good as the first or the second? No. It's about on par with the third, in my opinion, and a lot of the strength of this movie comes from the performance by Lynn Shay as Elise. She's always good, but this film entirely focuses on her character, so she gets to shine a lot in this film, and she really does. And can I just say, it's kind of awesome that a 2018 franchise horror film is entirely led by a 74-year-old woman. How often do you see that? <laughs> that never happens. And I kind of love the Insidious films for that specific reason. Despite the PG-13 rating, these movies are not aimed at teenagers necessarily. They can go see it, but all of the main characters, and all four of them, are always adults. And they always have adult problems. And this film deals with a lot of really dark shit which is in line with this franchise. The fact that it's always about family trauma or some really abusive past or some kind of haunted upbringing. And this film definitely stays within that wheelhouse. It's surprisingly a lot more effective than I expected it to be. The opening prologue is one of the best parts of the movie where we see young Elise and we learn about her father and her mother. Yes, the film definitely relies on jump scares, just as pretty much every film in the Insidious franchise does, but most of the time they're not false scares, and it's usually something that's actually there that's supposed to be frightening. It's not somebody banging on a door or some animal that pops out of the bushes or some bullshit like that. For the most part, things that go bump in the night are actually horrifying things in Insidious 4. There's a really great sequence inside a pipe with some suitcases. There's a lot of clever scares in the movie, and the director, Adam Robitel, who made The Taking of Deborah Logan, does a pretty good job of helming this film and making a completely competent horror movie, especially for the first weekend of January. You automatically go in with lower expectations, and I was left pleasantly surprised by the fact that this movie wasn't awful at all. Now, that's not to say that it's completely flawless. The humor in the Insidious franchise has always been an issue, and once again, these two spectral investigator characters, one of whom portrayed by Lee Whannell, who also wrote this film and directed the third one, the humor with these characters was at times physically cringeworthy. Sometimes people say something's cringeworthy, and that just kind of means they were like, oh, that didn't work for me. Like, there were a few moments where I actually went like that. Like, that really didn't work. One kissing scene in particular towards the end of the film that actually made me grossed out. There are aspects with the third act that feel very cobbled together. Some characters are introduced and it's meant to be like this big revelation and it just doesn't work. Certain things happen where you're supposed to feel like, wow, I didn't see that coming, or wow, what a role reversal. And there's just no feeling behind it. The film has some structure issues where it doesn't quite feel like you're watching a first, second, and third act narrative. The opening is very good, and leading into the second act, I was hooked, but it's that second act and the transition into the third that feels very sloppy. That, combined with the dreadfully unfunny humor, made the last key on par with the third film in the franchise. 
The big reveal of the demon in this one was also kind of weak. I didn't really think he was anything all that special. But I'm just surprised that we are four films into this franchise and they still have yet to be truly awful. <laughs> Usually by now, the horror franchises are just running out of steam. And I must give a lot of praise to Lynn Shea because again, a 74 year old woman headlines this movie. That's just awesome. And she's really good in the film. Overall, if you're a fan of the Insidious franchise like me, I don't think this film is gonna disappoint you. But if you've never been on board since the first one, this is definitely not going to convert you because there isn't anything new or particularly fresh in this one. I'm going to give Insidious The Last Key a B-. This film was far better than I expected it to be, especially for a January movie in the first weekend of the month, which is generally thought of as Hollywood's garbage pit. So, who knows? Maybe this January won't be awful. I need something to knock on. There we go. Let's let's hope. Guys, <laughs> thank you so much as always for watching. Look forward to my most overlooked and underrated movies of 2017. I'm going to post that video this weekend. If you like this, you can click right here and get stuckmanized.